High New Hope, coming to you from the Yulstead Chapel, and uh, just wanted to connect with you and maybe do something a little bit different this time uh, to give you the rest of the story with this great hymn of the church, He Leadeth Me. A little background. This beloved gospel hymn was written on March 26, 1862. The author, Joseph H. Gilmore, had left the following account. I had been speaking at the Wednesday evening service of the First Baptist Church in Philadelphia, corner of Broad and Arch Streets, about the 23rd Psalm, and had been especially impressed with the blessedness of being led by God. At the close of the service, we adjourned to Deacon Watson's pleasant home where we were being entertained. During our conversation, the blessedness of God's leading so grew upon me that I took out my pencil, wrote the hymn just as it stands today, handed it to my wife, and thought no more of it. She, without my knowledge, sent it to the Watchman and Reflector magazine, and there it first appeared in print. Three years later, I went to Rochester, New York to preach as a candidate for the Second Baptist Church. Upon entering the cha chapel, I took up a hymn book, thinking, I wonder what they sing. The book opened up at He Leadeth Me. And that was the first time I knew that my hymn had found a place among the songs of the church. Joseph H. Gilmore was born in Boston, Massachusetts, April 29, 1834. His father was the governor of the state of New Hampshire for a period of time. Joseph graduated from the Newton Theological Seminary in 1861. Throughout his life, he pastored several Baptist churches, served as a secretary to his father, the governor, was a professor of Hebrew at Newton Seminary, and later taught English literature at Rochester University, where he published several college textbooks in these subjects. He also wrote other hymns, but none ever gained the acceptance that He Leadeth Me did. Although Gilmore was a highly, res highly respected both in religious and educational circles, he is best remembered for this hurriedly written text when he was just 28 years of age and a visiting preacher in Philadelphia. William B. Bradbury, an important contributor to the development of early gospel hymnody, saw this text in the Watchman and Reflector magazine in 1863. He wrote this fitting melody to match the words, also added two additional lines to the chorus. His faithful follower I will be, for by his hand he leadeth me. The hymn, perhaps more than any other modern hymn, has been translated into many different languages. Servicemen during World War II were greatly surprised to find it one of the favorite hymns sung by the primitive Polynesians in the South Pacific. Charles Spurgeon also adds about this hymn, the sweetest words of the whole that is the monosyllable, my. He does not say the Lord is the shepherd of the world at large and leadeth forth the multitude as his flock. If he be a shepherd to no one else, he is a shepherd to me. He cares for me, watches over me, preserves me. The words are in the present tense. Whatever be the believer's position, he is even now under the pastoral care of Jehovah. He leadeth me. New Hope, you must know that God is watching over you. He is preserving you. He is caring for you and ministering to you. Let this hymn be an encouragement that God is active in your life. He is leading you. He leadeth me, O oh blessed thought, O oh words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. Faithful follower I would be for 
for by his hand he leadeth me. New Hope, I am so thankful that God is actively leading. Would you open up your heart, open up your ears to what the Lord has for you today. Allow him to lead you, to direct you, to guide you. He wants what's best for you. He loves you so much. Let's praise the Lord together as we thank him for his leading. Amen.